What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So Asus has launched a huge updated driver for the GPU of the Ally X and the original Ally. This is very welcome as the driver we were on was still working quite well, but it was August dated. This one brings us up to November and it's really only less than two weeks older than the AMD official 7840U driver that we do a lot of side loading up. So it really catches us up and brings AFMF2 to the devices. Now on my original Ally, I've already got this installed. So 11-15-2024, that's a 24-2011-07 driver. And they're both actually gonna be the same once it's done. The old driver was August 20. 23rd, 24.8.1, which had AFMF1, the original, which wasn't great uh, incorporated into it, but this has the newer version of AFMF2 incorporated. Now, I just used Armory Crate to install the driver on both of these, and while doing that, I did get a new chipset driver as well for the OG Ally, but I haven't seen one pop up for the Ally X just yet. Of course, I had to add my power supply to finish installing the driver on the X, but I just wanted to show the process a little bit. You can still do this in my Asus as well, but they are trying to incorporate a lot of this over here in Armory Crate, but I also recommend checking out my Asus still because a lot of updates do still go there. But anyways, once that's done, restart the device and then we'll be good to go. I always suggest checking the Microsoft Store to make sure that your Adrenaline software updated. It's the only way to really update that with the official driver installed. If it didn't, make sure you get that done. That way you have adrenaline working properly here with the proper version now we're 24 2011 with that 11 15 driver matching up on both allies for that now bringing with it af mf2 or amd's fluid motion frames 2 to the devices now if you go in here to gaming and graphics you'll see this listed in here now amd fluid motion frames 2 there's a lot you can do with the adjustments to the uh, modes there but we're going to leave auto just for purposes of showing that this works uh, in the video. So the OG Ally ready to go. And then we've got the Ally X right here. I'm glad they updated these at the same time. Um, it's nice to be able to take a look at both of them at once here. But yeah, you can see we're able to activate and get that here on the Ally X as well. Now, as far as activating this, I have some hotkeys just set up in Armory Crate so I can click these on and off using the adrenaline hotkeys pretty easily. The other thing you'll see here is what happens with the RAM difference between the OG Ally and the Ally X running the same game, the same settings. Um, and all of that, I really run into a lack of RAM issue with a lot of frame time issues and stuff so far on Indiana Jones, but that's another video later. AMD's fluid motion frames activates and works perfectly here. Now this game doesn't run very well right now on the OG Ally, has frame time issues as it is, and anything sub 40 FPS can get rough when it comes to frame gen anyway. So this game was definitely the worst one that I had tried, but other games like Path of Exile 2, uh, Dragon Age of Veilguard, and some other stuff I jumped into all would work just fine on both of these, but this game can get a little clunky, but I had it on here because I'm doing some other testing and work on it, um, and I just wanted to check it out. But yes, working perfectly here, I'm able to activate and use AMD's fluid motion frames too here, but I just wouldn't recommend it with Indiana Jones, but it is working really well on a lot of the other devices, and I'll show some of that on the Ally X here. So jumping over to the same game here, activating fluid motion frames too. Now this game runs much better on the X than it does the OG Ally, so it's actually a lot more doable. There's no stutter as much. It's not as clunky, but there's still a lot of input latency and I still would not play the game this way. It's really not worth it, um, but I still wanted to show it. I had the game on here and it's something I'm working on for another video, but yeah, AMD's fluid motion frames activating just fine there. But if we hop over to a game like Path of Exile 2 that at 720p is going to give me a little bit better base frame rate, we can double that up and get over 100 FPS on this 120 hertz screen. And this actually looks and feels great. The actual added input latency is not that noticeable. Picture's pretty clean. There's no stutter. Frame times are good. This is a good case scenario for AMD's fluid motion frames too. And the same thing over on Dragon Age, the Veil Guard. What's Interesting about this one is it has the same low FPS that uh, Indiana Jones has, but it does not have any of that stutter or clunkiness or added input latency as bad as Indiana Jones. On this game here, even though we have a low base FPS and we're doubling that up with AFMF2, it actually stays very playable, very smooth. So AFMF2 can be very much based on which, not just your base FPS, but which game you're playing and how well it really works together. And the same thing kind of docking this so that you can see it a little better here, screen capping with my capture card. I was able to activate all of this and have it working and double my FPS. And again, in games like Path of Exile 2 here, actually felt great. I would probably play it this way 
quite a bit and it's definitely Dragon Age of Valgard or any other lower-ish FPS game like this that is working this well with AFMF2, I would definitely activate it and use it here. I thought it felt and looked really good. But games like Indiana Jones that are really struggling with that, I would kind of stay away from. But at least I was able to show um, turning the feature on and off and showing it working here on the devices. This is a pretty big deal for Asus to get us this updated and bring AFMF2 over to both allies and start working on that. I know they can smooth out some of the stuff here in the performance. I did have some weird things where overlays would quit work and uh, FMF2 would quit working on the Ally X and I had to do some system restarts. It hasn't happened to me on the OG Ally, but it's happened to me numerous times on the Ally X. So I got to work on that. It hasn't been a perfect experience, but I am happy to see them bringing these updates over. It's something we've really complained about with Lenovo not updating our graphics drivers often enough. And even though Asus was starting to lag behind there, they've done a pretty good job of bringing us those driver updates. And this is a good one here. So looking forward to 2025 support. Hopefully they keep it going for the Ally and the future devices I'm sure they have coming. All right, guys, that's all I really want to go over. AFMF2 coming to the Allies here officially in the official driver. It seems to be working pretty good, minus some of my issues I've had on the Ally X. Thanks a lot for coming to check out the video. As always, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you guys in the next one.